Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and welcome to Suva International Airport. Um, and later this morning, I'm going to be flying back to uh, Nandi uh, in a new aircraft type for me. It's the Viking Air Twin Otter, which used to be built by De Havilland, uh, Canada. Um, but first, I'll show you around the terminal. Now, while this is the capital city of Fiji, the main international airport is actually in Nandi, and I'll show you around that in another video. It's pretty new and perfectly modern. Now, unfortunately, this taxi driver isn't familiar with how zebra crossings work, but otherwise, everyone is very friendly. Straight ahead is the cafeteria, which I found out only takes cash, and on the right is the departure hall. I was pretty early, so there were no queues. As Fiji Airways are sort of a member of the One Water Alliance, Qantas, Silver, Golds and Platinums all get access to the Premium Line, which might be helpful during busy periods. An unusual part of flying in such a small aircraft is the weigh-in. Initially I just put my hand luggage on the scales, but the check-in lady told me I actually had to jump on the scales myself, which was something new. Next up, I was off to the domestic departure lounge through security, where I waited for my aircraft and enjoyed the air show. Here's an ATR-42, which is the larger aircraft that they also fly on this same route, and I'll be uploading a video on board its slightly longer brother, the ATR-72, next week, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel. In this trip, I also flew in Fiji's new A350 and the A330, so those videos are also on my channel. Here's another Twin Otter taking off, and now, here's our DHC-6400 Twin Otter arriving. Now this aircraft type actually first flew in 1965, although our aircraft today is much newer and built in 2017. The reality is that it's a safe and reliable design, so why change it? The aircraft was designed by De Havilland Canada as a stall general use aircraft, and by stall I mean short takeoff and landing. So essentially it's powerful and manoeuvrable enough to work in very underdeveloped places such as dirt runways and Auckland etc. The fact that almost 1,000 have been built and it remains in production is a testament to how good the original design was. The ground staff were all very friendly and this lady actually asked to be included, as everyone thought it was very amusing that this grown child that I am was filming all the planes. Here we are boarding and a particularly cool thing about this small aircraft is that the captain greets you as you're boarding. There's no flight attendants, so there's just the two crew and there's also no toilets on board, although that wasn't a huge problem as it's literally a 28 minute flight. The seats are all in a 1-2 layout, although the back row, which is the exit row, has just three seats together. Now the big contraption on the left is the stairs mechanism that folds out, and you'll see that opening up when we arrive in Nadi, or Nandi, sorry, as I found out it's pronounced. After a brief intro and a safety chat, we took off to the runway. Now I was really fortunate with the weather that I got because only two days afterwards a cold front arrived and it looked like it rained for the entire following week. Coming up are some stunning views and I'll give out a few more details about the plane and the country I'm flying over.
the views were absolutely spectacular, with just the right amount of cloud to look interesting, but still enough light to get through onto the rich green forests and mountains below. This aircraft is a Dash 400 model, which implies there were early models. The original aircraft was the Dash 100, which was upgraded to the Dash 200, which provided a bigger nose and storage capacity. Then in 1969, the Dash 300 was introduced, and this came with a more powerful Pratt & Whitney PT6A-27 engine, and or two of them, and that model remained in production at the Toronto factory until 1988. What's really interesting is that a company called Viking Air in British Columbia bought the rights to produce replacement parts for the out of production DHC aircraft and then in 2006 they bought the type certificates from Bombardier or Bombardier, I'm sure the internet will tell me how it's meant to be pronounced, which essentially means that they could start building it. So the following year, production of the Dash 400 model began. It has an uprated engine as well as more modern electronics such as a glass cockpit and the use of composites in non-weight bearing locations such as the doors. According to Viking, by 2017 they had produced over 100 of the newer models, 70 of those had regular wheels, 18 were float planes, 10 had large low pressure tundra wheels and 2 of them had skis. Again, this just demonstrates how versatile this aircraft type is. So a little more about this airline, Fiji Link, who are a subsidiary of Fiji Airways, who are the national airline of Fiji. They have four of these twin otters, two ATR-72s, one of which I flew in, uh, and there'll be a video on that as well, and a single ATR-42, which is the one that you saw earlier in this video. They have a number of routes across the Fiji Islands, and I was really impressed with them. Their prices were reasonable, and the staff were all friendly. As I'm used to international travel, I arrived at the airport way too early and the friendly lady offered to put me on an earlier flight and found it quite amusing when I wanted to delay so that I could catch this particular aircraft type. Uh, the two internal flights I did were also all on time. The views flying over this beautiful country from around 8,000 feet were fantastic. It really looked like we were flying over Jurassic Park. We essentially flew right across the island of Viti Levu, which I'm probably not pronouncing right, which is the most populous and largest island in Fiji with approximately 600,000 inhabitants. Unsurprisingly, with such great weather and views like this, one of Fiji's main industries is tourism, with as many as 250,000 visitors per year, which is impressive when you consider the fact that the total population of the country is a little under a million. Sugarcane is also a major export as well as fishing and that's actually another reason why Fiji Airways are very excited about getting two new A350s as they have much larger storage holds than the A330 so they can fly more perishable items such as fresh fish to America and Australian markets. I really enjoyed my flight both as an av geek and as someone who enjoys taking footage of nature. While I did speed through some of the landing and takeoff footage, I'll upload these all in separate videos and include a link below. Now here's the door contraption opening up after we arrived in Nandi. Now I usually do try and avoid filming the crew's faces just out of courtesy although this guy found it quite amusing and asked me afterwards if it was going on YouTube so of course now I have to include it and you seem like a good sport. Here we are walking back to the terminal with two other twin otters sitting and waiting for the next flight and the very relaxed domestic arrivals. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for many more aviation videos. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.